Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the third eagle of the apocalypse and the co-prophet of the end times. This program is part two of my series on chapter eight of that great Old Testament prophet, Daniel. In the first part, we saw the ram defeated by the goat. The two horns on the ram signifies England and America. The single horn on the goat signifies Russia. These are the three horns which Daniel says the Antichrist brings down. He does not bring them down by fighting against them himself. He brings them down by goading them into starting World War III. Now let's look at this Antichrist in our second part in this series on chapter 8 of Daniel. In verse number 8 we read, And when the he-goat was grown, the great horn was broken. That means Russia is also decimated in World War III. And there came up four horns under it toward the four winds of heaven. The four winds of heaven mean north, south, east, and west. That means that international communism throughout the entire globe. The capital of international one world system will move from Moscow to Rome. And the four directions are from Rome. Out of one of these four directions will rise the Antichrist. Now that does not give you too much of a clue. I mean north, south, east, or west of Rome could mean the entire globe. But actually what Daniel wants you to do is draw a line horizontally through Rome and vertically through Rome. On one of these lines, Antichrist will come from. Let's see what Daniel says in the next verse. In verse number 9, Daniel writes, And out of one of them came forth a little horn, that is, from north, south, east, or west of Rome. And it became great against the south, and against the east, and against the strength. Now this is interesting because we know the Antichrist will subdue the entire world. So why does Daniel just say the south, the east, and the strength? Therefore, the strength must refer to the north and the west. In other words, the northwest. And if you draw a line northwest from Jerusalem, and where that line intersects a line coming east from Rome, you will find that those two lines intersect at what I believe will be the home city of the Antichrist. Those lines intersect on the city of Istanbul, Turkey. In verse number 10, Daniel describes further the Antichrist. And it was magnified even to the strength of heaven. That means the Antichrist will proclaim himself to be divine. And it threw down of the strength and of the stars and trod upon them. That means the Antichrist will take over all religions of the world and establish a one world religion along with the false prophet. Daniel continues in verse number 11. And it, meaning the Antichrist, was magnified even to the prince of the strength. The prince of the strength, of course, is Jesus Christ. And it took away from him the continual sacrifice. That means the Antichrist will ban the Lord's Supper in all Protestant and Catholic churches throughout the world. That is what is meant by the continual sacrifice. And Daniel continues, and cast down the place of his sanctuary. This is the abomination of desolation, which our Lord refers to in the Olivet Discourse. A Christian church without the Lord's Supper is really no church at all. It is vacant, it is desolate. This is the abomination of desolation. Continuing now in verse number 13, Daniel writes, And I heard one of the saints speaking. Now these saints are the two prophets, Enoch and Elijah. And one saint asked the other. Now the saint who is doing the asking is Elijah, and he poses his question to Enoch. How long shall be the vision concerning the continual sacrifice and the sin of desolation, and the sanctuary trodden underfoot. Enoch is the one who seems to know the timing of the end times, 
And he gives the same answer that he gives in the book of Revelation. Let's see how Enoch replies to Elijah's question. In verse number 14, Elijah says, Unto evening and morning, 2,300 days, and the sanctuary will be cleansed. Now this 200, 300 days is very interesting. First of all, you divide it in half because Daniel writes the morning and the evening. But if you divide 2,300 in half, you still only get 1,150 days, which is not quite the 1,260 days that St. John says in Revelation. And yet, Daniel and St. John are both writing about the same time frame, and that is the reign of the Antichrist for three and one half years. We should not be too concerned that these time frames do not line up exactly, because we should not be counting the days. We should be looking at that number. That number, 2300, is a symbolic number. If you take away the two zeros, which don't mean anything in end times prophecy, you get the number 23. And 23 is very significant in end times prophecy. Because it signifies putting man, the number two, a man and a woman, ahead of God, the number three, for the Trinity. Even the Hollywood movie, the number 23, recognized that this is the same as the number 666. Daniel is talking about the Antichrist. The Antichrist number is 23 here in Daniel, just as it is 666 in Revelation. It means the same thing. Man exalting himself over God. In verses number 15 through 22, the angel interprets Daniel's vision about the Medes and the Persians and the Greeks. However, in the next verse, we come to further end times prophecy about the Antichrist. And Daniel writes, When iniquities shall be grown up, that means the end times, there shall arise a king of shameless face and understanding dark sentences. That refers to the Antichrist. In verse number 24, Daniel continues, And his power, that is the Antichrist, shall be strengthened, but not by his own force. In other words, Satan is the one who empowers the Antichrist. And he shall destroy the mighty and the people of the saints. Now these are two separate groups. The mighty refers to the two nations he brings down, England and America, as well as Russia. All three horns he brings down in World War III. The people of the saints refers to the Christianity, specifically the Roman Catholic Church, which the Antichrist also brings down through the false prophet. And Rome will be trodden underfoot by the Gentiles for 42 months. In verse number 25, Daniel sums up his description of the Antichrist. And craft shall be successful in his hand. The craft, of course, he is talking about is witchcraft and Satanism. And Daniel continues, And he shall be puffed up and shall kill many, and he shall rise up against the prince of princes, which of course is Jesus himself, and shall be broken without hand. Now this refers to the end of the Antichrist. He is broken without hand in much the same way as King Nebuchadnezzar's statue is broken by a stone cut out of a mountain. In fact, this refers to the same event. The Antichrist kingdom, his one world system, will be destroyed by God himself at the Battle of Armageddon. Now, if you want to survive the seven years of tribulation, you must go out from this evil end times decadent capitalist system in other words, you must go out from Babylon. You must put on your rosary and scapular if you expect to escape into the desert with the Catholics. You must read your Bible and scriptures if you hope to be raptured with the Protestants. The Protestants, the Catholics, and the converted Jews are the three groups who will survive the tribulation and reign with Jesus during the thousand years of peace known as the millennium. Now, if you would like more information, simply write to the address you see on your screen.